Okay, welcome back everyone to my Utility AI in Unity tutorial series. In the last part, we spent time going over the basic concepts behind Utility AI and the basic architecture we will be building. Um, in this part, we'll actually dive into Unity and set up the core scripts needed for our prototype Utility AI. Um, you should be able to find the project files for the series by following the link in the description to my GitHub. And I'll continue to update it as we progress through the series. So feel free to go download it and just follow along. All right, so let's take a look at our scene here. Our goal here is to build a utility AI that's going to drive a very simple villager behavior. So you can see we have an NPC here. And then there's a tree here, which is the resource that he can go and chop or farm. And when his inventory is full, then he's going to go and drop off that resource at this brown storage unit here. And whenever he's tired, uh, energy is low, he'll go and um, just sleep in, in his little red home here. And when his energy is up and uh, replenished, then he'll go back to doing his job, which is just farming this resource and dumping it into the storage unit. So this is the very simple example um, behavior that we want our utility AI to drive. Okay, so let's think about what kind, what scripts we'll need to go on to there. Okay, first off, we're prob we're gonna need um, an NPC controller script, and this script will serve as the central place where everything else comes to access information, basically um, access information or run you know common methods uh, be, um, methods that to drive uh, behaviors and all that. Okay, but that'll be uh, more clear as we continue to code it out. So let's go ahead and start off by just doing some um, housekeeping here to keep things clean. NPC controller is going to be part of the core namespace because um, that is a counts as a core script for now. Okay, so what are some things that uh, the NPC controller might need a reference to? Well, uh, the NPC controller will likely need a reference to our move controller to tell the you know let me see where where to move to okay and as mentioned of, of course the most important part is the AI brain okay and then we will also need a list of actions of uh, actions that the NPC can do. Okay. Actions available. All right. And now let's go ahead and, and instantiate what we have. Uh, so we have a mover. We'll do a get component. Have an AI brain. We'll grab that component also. And then our actions available we can populate in the inspector. Okay. So um, just this is my coding practice here. Um, whenever I start a new project and I it's kind of hard to know where, where where to start and where to go from. Then I just kind of code things out, and wherever there's red squiggly lines, it's a sign. It's a it signals me that okay, I have to go and actually implement the script um, for that. Okay, so that's how I'm approaching this. So we know that we need a mover controller script. We're going to need an AI brain script, and we're going to need a script that defines what what are actions. What are these uh, actions that um, the NPC can execute or perform? Okay, so let's go ahead and build these out. So move controller, AI brain, and action. Okay, so let's take care of the easy one first, the move controller, right? The move controller, as the name suggests, um, is responsible for uh, moving the NPC around our world space. So that should just be a, uh, for now we'll keep things very simple and just put in what we need, um, the most essential things that we think we'll need. 
So to move around the world space, we're, we're probably going to need a nav mesh agent, okay? So let's go ahead and create that. Okay, add in the package it needs, okay. And um, so you notice I put a private nav mesh agent instead of public, okay. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is for good coding practice. Um, when, when you're starting out, it's typical to um, just make this public and then reference it and call it, you know, agent destination equals something. Uh, but as you get more um, experience, you'll see that that's really bad practice coding practice. What's uh, what's be the better way to do it is just to set it as a private um, private field and have uh, public methods that can access it and set a change change it. Okay, and so that's what we're going for here. So we'll first uh, grab a, a reference to it with a get component. And then we'll actually create a public method to actually set um, the destination whenever, whenever we need to call the NavMesh agent, okay? So we'll say um, move to vector three position. And then we'll just call the agent destination is equal to position. Okay, and that, I think that's all we need for the move controller. And so you can see now um, our agent is not exposed to um, all, any other code. It's actually just private and then closed off. And the only way we can access it is by calling this public move to method. That way the agent, um, any information contained in the agent is actually safe and encapsulated. And we only have public methods that um, allow other, other code to modify it via these public methods. Okay. Just that that was a um, segue. So that takes care of the move controller for now. Um, what else do we need? We need the AI brain. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that. Also, AI brain. And then housekeeping. Okay, so here's where the fun here's where the fun is. So what goes into the AI brain, right? As we mentioned in the previous video, the AI brain is responsible for all the utility AI calculations. It basically takes in a list of actions, it scores that list of actions, and then it picks out the best actions and you know puts out that information for all the other scripts to um, make make it happen. Okay, so we know that we're going to have to have um, some sort of a field for the best action. Okay, so let's go ahead and create that. Um, I believe we're going to need a reference to the NPC controller also. Um, we'll, so we'll put that in for now. And I think that should be it for now. So let's go ahead and grab that. NPC controller. Okay. And so what methods will be needed in this AI brain? Well, like I said, um, the AI brain is responsible for scoring these actions, right? So that means that we're, we're going to need a method called score action. And it's going to, um, it's going to take in an action and it's going to score it, right? And then it's also going to need, uh, what else does it need? It's also going to need a method that picks out the best action, right? After, after iterating through the list, iterating through the list of actions, then it'll pick out the best action. So we'll say decide best action, okay? And it's going to take in a list of actions Okay. 
So these are, yeah, this basically forms the skeleton of what the AI brain will look like, right? It has a best action and it's going to take, and then it also has two methods, decide best action, which decides what is the best action. And then it also has um, score an individual action and it takes in an individual action. Um, so that forms the skeleton of that script there, okay? And, and we'll come back and fill these in as we flesh out um, this utility AI. Let's go and take a look at what this action is, okay? So action. Now let's do housekeeping first. We'll put it in, um, no wait, this will still be in the core scripts for now. All right. So what is an action? As I mentioned, as I mentioned, what is an action? An action is the, the behavior or anything that the the NPC can do, right? Physically do walk to this place, farm, um, sleep, eat, work, right? Those those are actions. And how we want us to do it is that we want to be able to just uh, create actions in the inspector here. Um, um, let's, let's actually let's let's attach the MPC controller here so you can see and the move controller and the AI brain okay so you can see here because we created um, a list of actions in the MPC controller skips we can now add um, the idea is that we can now create these action objects and then just drag and drop them into here once we actually like code out what those actions are we can just drag and drop them here so that um, we have a clear visual visual uh, representation of what these actions are, and you can actually, and then you can just drag and drop them as you actually script them out. Okay, and to to have to get that to get that um, drag and drop feature, you're gonna have to implement uh, uh, action as a scriptable object. Okay, and then we're also gonna make this an abstract class because. Um, basically we want to make this a parent class, define all the basic things that an action needs, and then when we actually create uh, real actions like sleep, eat, move, then they, they actually, it, it, will, it will inherit from this act, parent action class. Okay, so let's see what, what are some things that actually need to go into any action, okay? I, we know that we're probably going to need a name for things, okay? Um, and then we're also going to need a score, private float score, okay? The score will keep track of how well this action, um, how, how urgent this action is. Okay, and then what I'm doing here is um, okay. So this score here is is kind of the, a very important part of the action, right? Every action has a score. Um, we'll set it up a private, and then we'll make a public getter, getter and setter. And an important thing to note is that actions, when, they, when they're scored, they can only be scored between a value of zero and one. That's why we use a clamp zero one here, method here. So that every time we set the score for an action, it's always between the values of zero and one. Um, and you'll see why as we go on, okay? Because, and well, just and just to give, give a quick idea of why is because you're, you're basically comparing these actions um, multiple actions so you need to kind of normalize them into some sort of uh, value that you can compare things across and um, or range a range of values that you can compare equally across different actions and so it makes sense to just bound it between zero and one so that you can see uh, 
when you normalize all the different actions, they all the scores will come out to be between 0 and 1. You can compare. 0.2 is less than 0.5. 0 0.8 is greater than 0 0.5. So the action with the score of 0.8 is going to be uh, more urgent. And that's why we clamped it between 0 and 1. If it's not making sense yet, um, just keep following along. It'll start to uh, uh, make sense as we actually go along. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, inst instantiate this score with zero. Okay, every score will start out with a score of zero. And what else do we need? Um, oh, another thing we're going to need is the list of considerations that are important to any action. Okay, all right, considerations. And so, as mentioned in the conceptual video, what are considerations? Considerations are um, information about the world that goes into deciding how urgent uh, an action is, okay? Um, and so you can see red squiggly line, that means that we're going to have to go and actually flesh out what considerate, what that consideration class is, okay? And then, every action should also have an execute method, right? Void execute, and this is a general method uh, that an action can run once it's picked out. Right, so once you pick, once the AI brain picks out this action, then it can actually uh, call in this execute method, and then anything, um, all the code that goes into uh, making the action happen will occur in this uh, general, this public execute method here. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and code out what this consideration is now, okay? As usual, we'll start out with uh, housekeeping. Okay, now consideration will also have to be a scriptable object, right? You can see here in our inspector when, when we're looking at action, right? Every time we drop an action here, we also want to be able to define cons uh, considerations for action. So an NPC has a list of actions and then every action has a list of considerations. So you want to also be able to drag and drop considerations onto actions so that you can define uh, you know, how important is this action based on the world information we have? Okay, so that's why this is going to also be a scriptable object. So let's go ahead and um, flesh out what goes into uh, a consideration. We know that we're going to need a name for the consideration. And then we're also going to have a score for a consideration. Okay, so actions have scores, and considerations also have scores. To determine the score of an action, you have to actually score the considerations, and then you pool together the score of the considerations to get you an overall score for the action. So, so we'll do the exact same thing here. Um, we'll, actually, we'll actually just copy-paste uh, this code right here from actions and plop it right into considerations. So same thing, um, we clamp it between the value of zero and one because when you're comparing uh, considerations, you wanna you wanna compare them all on the same based on the same um, scale. So and what better and it's easier to compare things on a scale of from zero to one values that are from zero to one. Okay, and then same thing as Actions will have will go ahead and instantiate the score at zero. Okay, and then uh, we'll have a method here to score the consideration itself. Okay. Uh, wait, actually, it's an abstract method, so we just do this. Oh, and then also make sure to declare this as an abstract class. Okay, so one thing to note here is notice that in AI brain, 
we have a decide best action and a score action here. Action doesn't actually have the, oh, we gotta fix this right here. Action, the action class actually, actually doesn't have a score action method in here, whereas consideration does. Now, why do we do that? Why is score action located in the NPC controller, or sorry, in the AI brain and not in the con action itself? Well, the reason is because considerations can vary a lot. All the type of considerations you have can vary a lot. For example, the consideration of a hunger stat is different from the consideration, uh, how you score the consideration of hunger is different from how you score um, something like, do I have an object in my pocket, right? Hunger is actually, you actually have to look at the value of your current hunger stat and then kind of score it based on, um, you know, what's the maximum hunger and what's the minimum hunger allowed for your player to be alive. Uh, whereas something like, do I have this object in my inventory? That's just a, uh, a score of zero or one, right? It doesn't make sense to say, a, uh, do I, t the answer to, do I have an object in my pocket? The answer, the score of that is 0.5. That doesn't make sense. It has to be zero or one. That's why score consideration before um, is unique to the consideration that you're actually looking at. That's why score consideration has to be in this in this self-contained in this class. Okay. Whereas action, right? Action, it doesn't matter what action you have. Act and any action will come up with a score of between zero and one. That's why we can have it in the AI brain where that where that happens. All right. I hope that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't. Uh, I promise you it'll start make clearing things will start clearing up as we actually code out um, the actual logic behind these methods here okay so let's take a look at what we have now we have a okay let's zoom in here we have our scripts for an NPC controller right that's attached to our NPC controller here it has a list of actions that we can just drag in. Once we actually code out the actions, we can drag and drop them into this, these fields here. A mover controller to control the NPC's movement or, um, around the world space, and an AI brain to take care of all the calculations. All right. So these are these make up the core scripts um, that will be important to our utility AI. In the next video, we'll actually start diving into uh, the logic behind these dis, um, actual methods in the AI brain. And it'll start making sense on how um, scores are handled, how uh, the best action decision is handled, and how considerations and actions themselves fit into this AI brain. Okay, so that will be the topic of the next video. I'm trying to keep these videos uh, not too long so that people don't get overwhelmed. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys want this to be more fast paced or if this is a comfortable enough pace for you to follow along. I could definitely try to cram in more uh, coding into these videos, but then um, again, uh, I'm just starting out on YouTube and I'm trying to figure out what's a good pace for these videos and um, I figured this would be a good stopping point for this part. Just building out the core scripts that we need uh, for that utility AI. So in the next video, we'll actually jump into the uh, logic of these um, all these different classes okay all right thank you very much and um, I look forward to fleshing those things out with you in the next video